Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kid Lee, and this is my 2014 Game of the Year video. This year, I have chosen to do a top five list, with number one being my Game of the Year. 2014 was a year that had a lot of great games, but also had a lot of poor games, and a lot of games that had really bad launches. 2014 was perhaps the worst year we have ever seen with games being released unfinished, games with game-breaking bugs, FPS issues, server issues, among others. On the flip side, this year brought us some of the best-looking games we have ever seen, games with amazing stories and gameplay. We have once again seen a huge growth in the indie market. Many of the top games this year were indie games. Without further ado, let's kick this off. With the release of other failed city builder games, such as the new Sim City, along comes a little game by the name of Banished. Along with the city or village building elements, the game also features survival elements. You start with a limited number of resources and citizens. It's then your job to build up your town and keep your people alive. If you run out of food, you die. If you run out of firewood during the winter, you freeze. The overall simulation in this game is great. It's even more impressive that this game only had one developer. That's right, one guy did everything, from the programming, to the artwork, and the audio. It's fun trying to micromanage all of your citizens, keeping them on task while trying to build up your town at the same time. With the addition of seasons, clearing forests, harvesting crops and trading, Banished is a great city building survival game and has earned its place as one of my top five for 2014. So, you are the new kid. Your coming was foretold by Coldwell Banker. I am the Wizard King. But the time for talk is not nad. Let me show you my kingdom. For years, people have been calling out for a good South Park game. People wanted to be able to create their own characters and live in this universe, or walk around the town. Finally, after many delays, South Park The Stick of Truth was released. Now, I'm not the biggest South Park fan in the world, but this game intrigued me. This is perhaps the best licensed game ever made. Obsidian worked with the creators of South Park to make sure this game was as close to the show as possible. And you know what? They nailed it. Of course. You're no normal human kid. It's you, Man Bear Pig! I have you now! Let us fight to the death! You sure about this? Now let's see how you like sitting through a whole presentation on global warming! Hey, I blocked it! Half an hour. You cannot escape the scientific certainty of global climate change! Yeah. The game looks just like the show. If someone was walking by, they would not be able to tell the difference between the show and this game. It's that good. I never thought in a million years that I would have so much fun in this game. There were times that I laughed out loud for minutes at a time. 
There were also times that I could not believe what I was seeing on screen. I can't believe some of the stuff that made it into the game. But hey, that's South Park for you, right? I think this game far outdoes the South Park movie in the category of, did I just see that? South Park The Stick of Truth is in my top five for 2014. Fresh meat for my trusty wolf companion. Roar! Ouch! You asked for it. Oh! Ouch! It is said that wars are only won upon the anvil of honor. Others believe victory requires strategy and a mastery of power. War is deception. There was a great quote from a New York Times reporter. He said, One of the things that Blizzard has done so well over the years is to take games that previously appealed only to a narrow audience and make them accessible to a broader audience. Blizzard has done that once again with Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft. I had never really played a collectible card game before Hearthstone. The success for Hearthstone comes down to a few things. They were able to come up with a game that was easy to learn yet hard to master. The interface and game boards they introduced were better than anything else out there. They were able to instantly compete with many of the card games that have been around for years. This game is also part of the Warcraft universe. The cards are spells, characters, and creatures that we have seen and dealt with for many, many years. In addition to the launch of the main game this year, Hearthstone also introduced its first adventure mode, the Curse of Naxxramas. They were basically able to recreate the World of Warcraft raid in Hearthstone, allowing players to fight the raid bosses in a card battle mode. And finally, just a few short weeks ago, Goblins vs. Gnomes, the first expansion, was released for Hearthstone, adding around 120 new cards to the game. As it was said in my opening quote, Blizzard has once again made a type of game accessible to a broader audience. I have burned away too many hours trying to come up with new ideas for constructed decks and trying to battle my way to the top. Hearthstone Here's a Warcraft is one of my top five games for 2014. On you maggot. It's all I need to bring the wrath of Mordor down on your pathetic head. I have been waiting a long time for someone to finally make a good game based around Middle Earth or Lord of the Rings. The crew over at Monolith Productions gave us something this year that made us stop and pay attention to Middle-earth once again. Shadow of Mordor takes some of the best elements from games like Assassin's Creed and the Batman Arkham series and throws in something called the Nemesis system to create one of the best games in 2014. I loved the Assassin's Creed series, but when they release the same game every year and then year after year, 
It just gets too old, too stale. I have been saying for the last few years I would love to see an Assassin's Creed type game, but in a different setting or franchise. In many cases, Shadow of Mordor does combat, assassinations, and parkour better than the previously mentioned titles. Then we have the Nemesis system, which is an item that takes this game to the next level. I have never seen a system like this in any other game. One of the developers was quoted as saying, This is an orc social simulator. If you think about how orc society is in Middle-earth, they rise and they fall. They fight and they challenge each other for higher ranks. All of this is simulated in the Nemesis system. As the player, you have a stake in this orc social system. As you kill them, things change, and you will see these changes on screen. The orc social system is randomly generated. If you and your friends are all playing this game, no one will have the same experience. The Nemesis system also allows you to create your own side stories along with the main story. As you fight orcs, they will remember you. If you throw one into a fire and he lives, the next time you fight, he will recall that last battle. Middle-earth Shadow of Mordor has a lot to offer. It's the Lord of the Rings game that I have always wanted to play, and now I have it. This could have been my game of the year. It is that good. Tell me why we shouldn't kill you now. The Conclave is destroyed. Everyone who attended is dead. Except for you. What do you mean everyone's dead? Explain this. I... can't. What do you mean you can't? I don't know what that is, or how it got there. You're lying! After some issues with Dragon Age 2, some people wondered if Bioware had lost their touch. Now that Dragon Age Inquisition has been released, I don't think they have. Inquisition is a powerhouse of a game, a deep, epic RPG that you can spend hundreds of hours in and enjoy every last minute. Quickly, before more come through! What did you do? I did nothing. The credit is yours. At least this is good for something. The game brings back Bioware's conversation system, allowing you to choose your own path. The RPG elements allow you to level and customize your main character and companions by setting up their gear and what abilities you want them to use. A lot of people are actually comparing this game to Star Wars The Old Republic, given the amount of customization and open-world questing. Inquisition is one of the best-looking games of 2014, and if I was to give an award for best soundtrack, it might win that as well. I don't think Inquisition is going to match the magic of Dragon Age Origins. Most people consider Origins as the RPG of the decade. If you don't have it, get it. Dragon Age Inquisition is the best RPG of 2014. It has everything a good RPG should have, from a great story, great gameplay and combat, great customization, a beautiful world and music, the ability to take your own path, and an experience you will remember for years to come. Dragon Age Inquisition is my game of the year for 2014. Here I thought we'd be ass deep in demons forever. Varric Tethrus, rogue, storyteller, and occasionally unwelcome tag along. Are you with the Chantry, or? <laughs> Was that a serious question? 
I would love to hear what your top five is for 2014. Please leave a comment below. Thank you all so much for watching. And with that being said, everybody keep playing and have fun.